Good morning, brothers and sisters of the Reformation. This is not only Halloween, not only a homecoming weekend at UW, but it's also Reformation Sunday. It's our day as Lutherans and all who acknowledge that Luther had a good idea a long time ago. I'm Ron Mock from Madison, retired pastor. Glad to be with you here this morning. I invite you to turn to the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the, to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes us righteous. So receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I forgot the opening hymn. Oh. Oh, 
Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, Take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, 
We thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. It's time now for the children to go join Heidi. This morning's first lesson comes from the book of the Psalms, chapter 46, and we will read it together responsibly. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the world should change, though the mountains shall inherit of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble, with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The truth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the words of the Lord. See what destiny remains for him. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Today's second reading comes from the book of Romans, beginning with the third chapter in the 19th verse. Now, we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By the law of works? No, by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. This is the word of the Lord. Please join in the singing of the Gospel Acclamation. Lord, let my heart be good 
Holy Gospel for this Reformation Day is a reading from John chapter 8. Jesus said to the Judeans who had believed in him, if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. On Sundays, my favorite part of the newspaper has always been the comics. And even after they disappear, I remember some of them. Especially on this day, I'm remembering the comic strip called Non Sequitur. There was this young gal, Danae, and she has a friend, a talking miniature pony, whose name is Lucy. And she's sitting at a table, and there's a sign in her, on her table that says, the First Church of Denae Recruiting Station. And then another sign on the table says, ask about our heavenly guarantee. It's Lucy the horse who says, well, what guarantee do you give? And Denae says, Yeah, we have a guarantee for a hundred buck donation. We guarantee that you will have automatic entry into heaven or your money back. The horse says, what if I don't have a hundred dollars? Danae says, well, there's the lifetime sweat equity plan, but it's not as holy as cash. I don't forget that on this day because Reformation Sunday is here because heaven was offered as a gift for cash in the church at one time. A very long time ago, Martin Luther took on that claim of his church that for a cash contribution to the building fund at St. Peter's in Rome, you would be guaranteed heaven. He and a lot of others along with him used the Gospel of John and the letter of Romans that have been part of the lessons for this day to say basically to the whole church, salvation is a free gift from God. You can't buy it. You can't pay for it. And today, you and I are the sons and daughters of that ancient legacy and tradition that says basically... Because God says so, 
we are free to take a stand by trusting that God gives grace as a gift and by trusting and understanding that our calling in life is to serve our neighbor and others. In the gospel reading for this day, Jesus pays attention to those same kinds of offers. He says to some people who had been following him but now have become dropouts, they say, you know, we are free because we are children of Abraham and Sarah. And Jesus says to them, well, if you continue in my word, you will truly be free. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Jesus jolts this ethnic pride of his listeners and he says, the, the faithfulness of God isn't tied to your family tree. Heaven is not the gift of your family tree. Heaven is the gift of God only, and it's free. Oh, the dropouts protest because they love to fly their nationality in front of God and say, God, you're with us, right? What do you mean we will be free? We've never been slaves to anyone, they complain. If I'd been there, I wouldn't have been as nice as Jesus. I would have said, free? You were the slaves of Egypt. You were the slaves of the Syrians. You were the slaves of the Babylonians. You were the slaves of the Persians. And, and now you are the slaves of the Romans in your own city. But Jesus doesn't say that. Instead, he lifts the conversation to a theological issue and he says, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. Only the son of the highest can make us free, free forever. It's this stand that Jesus takes that causes a lot of people to desert him because they saw him as the leader of a new national religion. And he said no. Jesus took that stand, and not only did people desert him, but they began to oppose him. The leaders plotted against him. They finally tricked the Romans into putting Jesus on a cross. And yet we know that the rest of the story reminds us that God reversed that death, gave Jesus new life, and raised him up to be the Lord of the whole universe of all the galaxies. That's the truth that Jesus talks about in the text. That's the truth that you and I are a part of when in our church we take a stand that grace is God's gift. It's not earned, you can't sell it and that our calling in life is to take good care of our neighbors, even the ones we don't like. Missionary Paul understands that freeing message when he writes it to the Romans, there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by God's grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Paul, you see, takes a stand, a stand in freedom as God's gift in behalf of every nation, not just one nation. And that's where Martin Luther comes in. Martin Luther understood Paul. He understood the gospel to John. He understood the heart of the gospel and that's why he asked the church to stop saying you can buy heaven for a cash gift to a new building. By one report, Luther responds when he's called in to give testimony to a church council. He says, unless I'm convinced by scriptures and plain reason, my conscience is captive to the word of God. Here I stand. God help me. 
on this day we remember that's our legacy. That's who we are as Lutheran Christians and as all our, Christ, as all our Christian partners who have joined us in working together understand it. We are free in Jesus Christ. We are free to take a stand that grace is God's gift and that our calling is to serve our neighbor. So there are new challenges about this legacy of ours in the contemporary church scene today. A very glaring example of that is Christian nationalism. By Christian nationalism, I mean the belief that America is a Christian nation in which whites are privileged, native-born are special, and conservative, politically conservative people are the real Christians. Instead of cash to buy our way into heaven, we're offered a whole ideology about one place, one color of people, and one understanding of what the Constitution says as our clear path into heaven. A hundred church leaders have written and taken a stand declaring that this version of Christian nationalism is a perversion of the gospel. It's a misunderstanding of God's grace for all people in all nations in all time. The infection of nationalism is not just in one church body, it's in all church bodies. While using traditional Christian words, this particular ideology mixes religion and politics and aligns teachings and practice that are based on fear and distrust. They're subject to conspiracy theories instead of the word of God, and they especially allow no provision for taking care of the poor, the powerless, the dispossessed, the imprisoned, the hungry, the broken. In fact, they don't even recognize what Romans says, that all of us are broken, that life itself is a life of brokenness, and only God can be gracious to forgive us and welcome us home. Now, the irony of this message of Christian nationalism is that it sounds a lot like Denai's cartoon representation, heaven guaranteed for $100. Well, not exactly cash, but heaven guaranteed to those who are loyal to nationalism, to whites are more important, to uh, um, a, a politically very conservative position. That's a very narrow description of who is a Christian. It's even a more narrow description of who's an American. It is this false gospel that explains why a very large independent congregation in Minneapolis just fired all four of its pastors. And the 70 white men who make up their council described their sins this way. They said, you four pastors aren't politically conservative enough for us. You need to speak out more against blacks, Jews, Muslims, and everybody else not white. Nice Christian attitude, isn't it? And they also said the pastors spent too much time in their church building downtown taking care of the poor and the homeless. And they said, you should be back here in the suburb taking care of us. We're paying the bills. A perversion of the gospel? Yes. Christian nationalism? We don't need it, but we have it. How different are the people at First Lutheran Church in Colorado Springs, Colorado? They have a different understanding of the gospel. 
they understand what John has said today, that we are only free in Jesus Christ. And what Paul said, there's no distinction. Everybody needs grace and gets it as a free gift. And with that understanding, they have a table that's open to everyone. And they just decided and spent, they raised three and a half million dollars among the membership and they took their former church building and they converted it into a really nice place for the community. In that place, people are welcome to come and take part in all kind of services provided by any faith-based organization in the community that wants to do that. They understand that free in Christ to take, a, they're free in Christ to take a stand in behalf of the gospel and all people. And so their new building provides youth programs, concerts, meeting spaces. It has a place for Lutheran social services, for campus ministry. It has a place for direct services to refugees and immigrants. In, a, in other words, the model of First Lutheran in Colorado Springs speaks of hope, of faith, of inclusion of all people. That's the freedom to which we're committed. Free to take a stand for God's grace and service to our neighbor. A second challenge to this truth in Jesus Christ that makes us free today is the outrageous and open political uh, racism in political speech today. You and I are listening in a way to, to political and TV preachers and commentators on television use racial remarks that you and I would never think of making publicly. We still struggle with making those privately, but we would never think of making it publicly. We have enough trouble dealing with hidden racism, racism in our language, and we're even having more trouble with public speech against Hispanics and African Americans, against Jews and Muslims, against gays and lesbians. Those kinds of outrageous speech should make us all get up and say, not here, that's not right, and shut them off. Racism is the result of the sins of our fathers and grandfathers and great-grandfathers who started slavery and the consequences of that are still affecting us all these generations later. Public and open, outrageous racism in political and public speech needs you and me to stand up and say no more, no longer. Christ made us free in God's grace, not in beating down our neighbor. Christ's gift of grace and freedom is our calling to take care of our neighbor, or as Luther says it, to love our neighbor is to protect our neighbor's reputation and put the most charitable construction on all that our neighbor does. You and I learned it in catechism. We need to practice it today in a special way what it means to take a stand for the neighbor means today to stand up against racism and sexism in our schools, in our family gatherings, in group meetings, at our card tables, and it means ultimately taking a stand against those public outrageous remarks by going to cast our ballot when ballot time is here. So saints of the living Christ at this first Lutheran, the biblical readings of this day remind us whose we are, what our legacy is in the Reformation, that we are called 
to recognize that we're free in Jesus Christ to take a stand for the gospel of God's gift of free grace. And we are free to take a stand for the neighbor in need of defending that neighbor and supporting that neighbor. The question for all of us is, having those gifts, what are we willing to do about it? In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray as the children of the Reformation to have the courage to take a stand in the name of God's freedom and our neighbor's concerns. Thanks be to God. Amen. We sing the hymn. church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in the prayer of God's creation, responding to each petition with the words, Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, and homesteads, 
write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who serve and for those who aspire to public office. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for those who seek to grow in faith and to love you. Guide teaching and learning and confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, and seminaries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind, body, or spirit. Especially today we pray for Tina, Oliver, Judy, Andy, Nate, Charles, John, Dorothy, and Mark. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, and nursing homes to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intended. We also pray for all those in our hearts silently that we may not have listed here. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us and who now dwell in your holy habitation. Give us the courage through their example to work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers in your hands through Jesus Christ, our one truth and life. Amen. At this time, we offer our prayers for our offering. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ who after his resurrection sent forth apostles to preach the gospel and teach all nations and promised to be with them even to the end of the age. And so with all the comforts, all the choirs of heaven, the glorious company of apostles, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to all, saying, Take and eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At the same supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Join together as one people by the Spirit, we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who are hungry and thirst, come. The table is ready for all.
pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into the feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy.
And now, please go in peace. The loving word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.